All right, this week I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of doing uh, some kind of a recreation video or teaching you something or teaching myself something, I'm going to be sh showing you a drill that I shoot every month. Uh, I say every month, but I shoot it not every month. Occasionally, every month. I try to shoot it once a month. And what it is, is it's a way for you to track your progress and pool and get a good rating for yourself. There's a ton of different ways to rate yourself. The APA has its system, the BCA has its system, and then, but they all kind of give you different handicap numbers for different systems. So I got this originally from the Colorado State Billiards Division, um, .edu, which is run by Dr. Dave Billiards, which is one of the best pool YouTube channels around. And I highly recommend you go check him out. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, if you haven't, you haven't heard of him. But yeah, the guy puts out great content. I'll leave a link to his channel and I'll also link, leave a link down to all the rating systems that they have listed on their website. This 10 ball one is actually the very last one. The way it goes is you're playing 10 ball and you do 10 racks and basically you're playing against the ghost. You break and you take ball in hand and however many balls you make that rack is how many points you get towards your total overall score. Uh, in the end, you add up all 10 racks and it gives you a score and then you can look at the list. Lately, I've been shooting as an A player. The highest ever shot was 77, and I felt really good about it. But literally, a week after I shot my 77, I shot a 32 and played like a D player. So you can't just get a good rating off of one try. You wanna do this multiple times on multiple days, multiple months, and it'll give you a good average. Um, right now, I'm averaging in the 50s, uh, high 50s. So I'm probably shooting at about like an A. Anyways guys, without further ado, uh, this is going to be a really long video, so let's get into it. Alright guys, welcome back to my next video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a ranking system that I shoot about once a month. It is 10 racks of 10 ball. I got this from, I believe it's run by Dr. Dave Billiards, the Colorado State Billiards, edu. Anyways, I had a list, I googled a Wow, this was back in 2013. I googled a list of, I googled how do I rank myself because I was curious where I where I'd be ranked. Um, a bunch of different. I was I was playing in some like pro slash semi pro tournaments, and you had to pay different amounts based on what your rank was. And I was ranked a. Oh, I can't remember. Anyways, I think I was ranked a B B level at the time, and so they they varied the the entry fee based on what your rank was. And anyways, um, this is just something I shoot every month. I figured it'd be cool to show you guys. Um, you guys can get an idea of actually how I actually play other than trying to make stupid shots that professionals make on their first try. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be the video this week. It's gonna be kinda long. Um, you know, feel free to stick around. And my cat's crying in the background, but uh, it's cause my wife is uh, out visiting the in-laws. But uh, anyways, I line up here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get straight in on the two. And I do a pretty good job of it. I just stun it over, get straight in on the two. The, the big problem in this rack, if you look at it, is getting from the three, or not from the three to the five, but getting from the, it's getting good shape on the three so that you can get good shape on the five to get down to the six. Um, basically from where I'm looking at the rack, either you'd have to get a strong angle on the five and go off the, rail to the left of the five, back over to the rail on the right, and then back over to the rail on the six, or you could just get straight in and draw straight back for the six ball in the corner pocket. And that's what I want to do. So my goal is to get straight in on the three, uh, just roll forward a little bit here, and then I will put a lot of bottom, just draw down to that rail. And hopefully leave an angle and get back up for the seven. And you can see me here contemplating it. And get ready to shoot, and we'll see how I do. So yeah, that's about straight in. Um, the key to this next shot is just to uh, make sure you get a good stroke on it, but you either want to hit, hit it firm enough that, you either hit it, hit it with enough stroke that it gets to the bottom rail and back up, you leave an angle, or it doesn't get all the way back down, so you leave an angle that way. And you can see what I do. I hit it at the perfect speed to get it so close to straight in 
That was very dangerous. Had it traveled up just like another inch, I would have been dead straight. And I would have had to settle for drawing back and shooting the seven into the, uh, down, all the way down the rail, which obviously you don't want to do here. Uh, but I had a little bit of angle. I just played it and uh, I draw back. Shoot the, uh, shoot the seven in the corner pocket. But anyways, yeah, I was, uh, I was, was this is something I shoot like every, every month or so. And it's, I, th I think it's just a really good way to track how you're doing in pool. You can, I, you can watch your progress as you learn more and more things. And, uh, you know, you, you're not always consistent with it, but you can get a good idea of how you're shooting on that specific day. And if you're, and if you do it, you know, every month, you can see your range of averages. Like, you know, for the past six months, I shot like this. For the past six months prior to that, I shot like that. And you can average them together, or you can shoot it every week. You can shoot it every day. Um, it's, but basically, it's just telling you everything that you're good at with. Uh, it's pretty much all offensive though, because there are no defense shots in this. So it gives you a good rating on your offensive abilities, which if you play good offense, you're probably pretty good at defense too. You you understand, you know, how to move the cue ball around the table and Yeah, if you can't play offense then you probably aren't very good at defense either. So uh, I think it's a good rating system. So actually start off, um, I swear I didn't uh <laughs> I swear I didn't start, you know, start this video after I shot a 10, 10 point rack. Um, I just, I had been practicing, decided I was ready to start, and got pretty, got pretty fortunate, and got 10 balls on my first rack. Um, so we'll go ahead and skip ahead to the next rack. All right, so here we are in the next rack, and I break. Um, cue ball gets kicked around a little bit, but it didn't really matter because you get ball in hand. I think that's actually one of the things I'm not really a big fan of about this is it doesn't really take into account into your cue ball control after the break, which is obviously really important. Um, other than if you scratch, um, what I play is if I scratch on the break and I make a ball, then none of the balls that I count, none of the balls that I made on the break count as points. So it does serve as a reduction, um, kind of. Um, I don't spot them though, I'll just leave them down and if I end up running out the whole rack then maybe if I made two balls on the break and I scratch then I only get eight points. Uh, but moving on, um, you can see the line that I was uh, wanting to get the cue ball on. I want to get close to straight but just leave like a little bit of angle so I can slide between the, uh, the six ball and the rail and because that's really the best place to shoot the three ball from. I could play it with a lot more angle and then have to, but I really don't like doing those thin cuts that are like really long because this is a nine foot table and the pockets are pretty tight. Um, but anyways, I'm going to try to get it between the six ball and the rail and I do that pretty well. I leave a little bit of an angle so I can hopefully get over for the four and shoot the four in the same pocket that I'll be shooting the three in. So I line it up, and we'll see how I do. Well, I know how I do, but you'll see how I do. And as you can see, I made two huge mistakes. One, I hit it way too soft. Um, I was never going to get that position at the speed that I hit it at. But also, I didn't get enough right on it because uh, the goal was to come out, you know, at an angle that I'd be running like almost parallel to the line that the pocket. I needed to shoot it in, but I was, I'm left with a little bit of a little bit of space, and somehow I managed to cut that four ball into the side pocket. Usually I would miss that shot, but uh, I got kind of lucky this go around. Um, so here I am. Now I got a shot on the five in the side. Um, I have the option I can roll it forward and play the six down into the corner, but I don't really want to do that. I, I want to roll it slow and play the six into the side pocket. Uh, I don't like playing it down in the corner because if I leave myself with like a slightly bad angle, I risk it's going to be hard to avoid the scratch. So I just slow roll it. Um, I take a, a hard cut on the six into the side, but it's so close. It's it's really hard to miss. Um, here, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I think 
Okay. So what I wanted to do was get the cue ball down to that rail and then kill the angle that it was going at with some left English and try to get straight in to just stop it. You know, stop the cue ball and then I can play the eight in the other corner pocket. But I leave myself a little bit too much angle. But I should be fine from here. But I'm not, and I miss. Um, it was a pretty bad miss. I didn't miss it by a little bit either. I missed it by like half a diamond. So that's the end of the rack, that rack, and we'll get on into the next rack. All right, here we are back in uh, back in action, rack three. I got 17 points so far. A uh, pretty strong start, um, but I make the six, the seven, and something else. One, two, three, and the four ball. I don't know where the four ball went. Uh, but still, three balls on the break, that's pretty good. Cue balls in the center of the table, but I think it did some traveling around. I can't really take credit for that. Got kicked a couple times. But I'm take ball in hand anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's look for any problems in the rack. Try to figure out you know, what, what about this rack is hard. And uh, the way it looks, it's, it's really not that difficult. Um, the only thing that kind of looks... The only thing that kind of looks awkward to me is the five ball just because of where the three is. I mean, the five ball has, you know, it has every pocket on the table you can get on. If you, if you can see the five ball, you can make it in a pocket. But, you know, you want to get an easy shot on the five. Um, you just don't want to end up behind the nine, which it really shouldn't be a problem. Or is it? <laughs> okay, I don't remember doing that. Uh, I'm pretty good at jump shots though, so yeah, that's what I'm, I'm gonna go grab my jump key right now. Wow, I, I really overdrew that. That was a silly way to play it. Uh, looking back, you know, like doing that, I should I probably should have just accepted that I'm gonna have a little bit of angle, you know, run it up two rails, played it in the in the far corner, or in the bottom, in the top right, or just the side pocket. But that was definitely the wrong. Uh, that was definitely the wrong thing to do. But anyways, here I am behind the nine, lining up, lining up the three ball. Hopefully, I can make it. I don't remember if I make it or not. And uh, no, I miss it. So that's going to be the end of that rack. Luckily, I made three balls on the break. So despite only making two balls afterwards, I still got five points. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll move on to the next rack. Alright, here we are in rack number four. Lining up for the break. Uh, I had a good start. 17 points in two racks, but then I messed it up. Um, but I still got five points because I had a lucky break. Made, uh, made three balls on the break. That was nice. And, uh, bam, you see right there, I already identified the problem in the rack. The six and seven. So the seven balls blocking the six, but luckily, I don't remember what I do here, but I have the, uh, you can see the ten balls there, it makes it a huge pocket. And that six, seven is lined, is lined up perfectly straight to do the, uh, the six into the seven, the seven off the ten into the corner pocket. Or I could uh, play it, you know, straight into the pocket and the six ball, six ball will travel down towards the, uh, the corner, this bottom corner here on the left, and I'll have a place to make it. So I think what I'm thinking about right now is, you know, what exactly do I want to do? Um, I'm looking at how I want to get onto the five ball, I guess, you know, right now. Yeah, it doesn't look like the five ball goes into either corner, so you have to play it into the side pocket or into one of the other corners. But I'd rather, I'd rather hit the slower. I'd rather hit the uh, shorter shot, uh, especially since five's in the ta in the middle of the table. It makes it easy to get into the side pocket. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw off this rail bottom right, come over, and yeah, that's perfect. I get straight in on the end of the side pocket. And now it's a big problem in the rack, the six seven. But it's really not that big of a problem, is it? Because the uh, the combo is lined up really nice. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, uh, that was interesting. Why did I stop it there? And it, what I was thinking is I thought I would roll it forward. And, uh, 
you know, just shoot the six, seven combination. But it looks like I'm gonna play the carom and make the seven. That works, but I don't know if it's the higher percentage. See, I almost missed it. I didn't hit it very good. I could have missed that shot. I got lucky. And now, now look what I'm left with. If I, if I just play the combo normally, I can stop the cue ball right where the six was. And the six ball will travel over towards this other corner pocket and I'll be left probably with an angle to get down for the eight. But now I gotta shoot the six ball in the side pocket. Hit it with follow top right and get down to the eight ball. Um, I make it and I get there. But it was a little lucky. I think, I definitely think I've made a mistake in the way that I played that. I probably, I was so perfect on the five. There's no reason for me to play the, uh, play the carom there. It's, it's hard to control. Um, here, I probably should have came off, you know, I hit, hit it, like stunned it over with some right, came off two rails, so I'm traveling on the line, but I end up all right with where I'm at. It's not ideal, but it's still very makeable and pretty, pretty simple shot. Um, I guess it does kind of like give me a problem though, because the pin ball is not just like sitting in the pocket. So I gotta, yeah. I couldn't go forward with it because I was going to end up on this rail on the right. So I drew I drew back and uh, went off the side rail, came back out and made the 10 there. But there's another rack with uh, 10 points, doing pretty good, 4 racks in, and we'll uh, go ahead and skip to the next rack. Alright, here we are in the next rack. Uh, rack number 5 it is now. Um, I don't have all the... I haven't done all the editing for the video and whatnot, so I have no idea where how many points I have now. I had, let's see, I had 10, 7, 17. Uh, you, you guys are going to see it. I'm going to do a little bit of editing at like a ball counter up there and everything so you can see how many points I'm at and all that so you don't have to try and keep track like I am. But uh, rack number five and... <clears throat> The two ball is a bit of a problem because the four is blocking pretty much any pocket and uh, the only thing, and the six ball is blocking the one pocket that it does have access to, um, that side pocket. So what I got to do here is I got to play the, uh, I got to play the two six combination. I guess another option I could have had was to uh, play the one into that side pocket run into the six hopefully it breaks out the two but this is a much higher percentage way to play it um, the only thing I worry about here is I kinda got on the wrong side of the two ball I wanted to be on the right or I wanted to be you know closer to the bottom of the screen so that I could just stop it and play the two ball in the same pocket but it looks like I'm probably gonna overrun the position I don't know we'll see yeah, that's what I was worried about. Now I don't really have a pocket for the two. Um, my only really option, my only real option is to bank it into the side pocket that I'm standing next to right now. And uh, man, I really don't remember what happened in these racks. Well, we'll see if I make it. I have no idea. Um, but the position somewhat automatic as long as I hit it at yeah about that speed and I make it and that position was not automatic <laughs> okay I didn't think that was gonna be a problem but now I gotta shoot this uh, this crazy long like like awkward cut into the corner I'm lining up I must see it I thought it might be blocked by the eight but it doesn't look like it is the way I'm teeing up. So uh, here I just got to make it come off this rail on the right and uh, get position on the four. And yeah, I missed that. That was just, uh, I don't know, I, that was just poor positional play. You know, that, that was definitely a mistake. And uh, well, I guess we'll get to the next rack. Okay, rack number six. Here we are. Um, I had a good start, but I had a couple mistakes after that. I haven't really had a good rack since after my first uh, after my first couple of racks. And here we got another layout that looks kind of difficult. We got the seven, eight, and nine. The seven and nine ball on the spot on the rail where you hate to see them. Those are really terrible to deal with. The two balls kind of blocked in by the four, so getting shape on the three isn't that easy. There's no 
it doesn't really look like there's a good path that you can take that'll take it you know up the line that you want to travel so you gotta play really good speed control here and so I'm gonna go up one rail just hit top English oh, English doesn't yeah and I get pretty good on it I get about straight in this is good it is well controlled speed wise here you want to end up on the left side of the line for pocketing the four ball in the corner so you can float over for the five and in the same corner. Um, if you get Even if you get straight in though, you'll be alright, you just follow it up a little bit. What you don't want to do is get an angle where you have to run into the five. And yeah, I do a pretty good job there, I was straight in, I just kind of kind of hit low just and let the English take after sliding along the felt for a little bit and roll forward slightly and here I'll just kind of try to float over hit the five into the corner and well I get there but I get about dead straight that wasn't wasn't a great shot but it well looking at where the seven where I have to hit the seven I what I end up doing here is I'm gonna play the seven nine combo because uh, it's, it's not a very hard shot to make and I want to make sure that I'm going to be left on the you know I want to be make I want to make sure that I'm on the side of the right now you're looking at it the left side of the seven ball that way that uh, if it's in front of the side pocket I can see it so this is all about speed where you hit it and that wasn't where I wanted to be yeah, now you can see how frustrated I am. Yeah, chalking the cue with anger. It's hard. It's hard to make. It's hard to show your anger while you're chalking a cue. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I guess I pl try, try to play the bank, and yeah, that was a that was a miss, straight up miss. So chalk it down. Seven more points, and we'll go ahead and get into the next rack. So I gotta say guys, this is uh, this is pretty interesting to go back and watch these videos. I'm seeing a lot of mistakes that I make that, uh, that aren't quite so obvious whenever you're playing on the table. And I have to say, I, I probably recommend doing this to any pool player. Uh, just record yourself shooting through some racks and then uh, seeing, and seeing, if you, seeing what you did wrong. See if you can, but what did you mess up? You know, why didn't I get out that rack? And I'm seeing a lot of mistakes of why I'm not getting out on racks or why racks are, you know, a little bit more difficult than they should have been. Um, you can see me earlier. I was, I was trying to see if the four would go past the nine. I really don't remember if it does or not, and I'm not sure how I want to play it. But, but here I kind of want to end up on the far side of the two ball, so I can have like a little bit of angle to float back up float over for the four in the corner pocket if that's where it goes and judging on where I where I played it I think that's I think that's what I'm gonna do um, if it doesn't go to this corner and on the bottom left of hand side of the screen what I'll do is I'll follow it up and yeah okay so I'll follow it up and I'm gonna end up playing with the four ball into this other corner pocket so I was just trying to get straight in so that I could follow it in so I could follow it up and get position on the floor Oh, no I wasn't. Okay, I was lying. <laughs> Alright, I was I was seeing what the pocket line was for the four to see what side of it I wanted to be on to get shape on the five. Alright, from here the rack's pretty easy. I just need to get down to the, uh, yeah, pocket that. Put a little bit of top right on this. Make sure I don't get behind the eight. That's the most important part of this rack. I want to leave an angle to go one two rails down back down for the seven yeah right right about where i put my pool cue tip right there we'll see if i get there and yeah that's about right that isn't where i put my pool cue tip but it is the line that i put it on and uh you see i leave myself a nice angle you know an easy pocket on the six ball but i still got a nice angle to follow you know two rails with a uh, top right come around and uh, shoot that seven into the uh, that corner pocket 
Yeah, come off the rail, slow down, cue ball, you want to leave an angle. And I got a pretty decent angle. Um, I have two, two options here. I can go with top left. And, oh no, you don't really want to go with top left here because you don't want to risk getting stuck behind the 10. You just kind of want to float, yeah. The way I pointed my, where I pointed my cue. That, that's the line I want to get on. But I want to come straight up the table, so I'm just basically going to stop this cue ball. Or stun it, I should say. And, uh, wow, I missed my shape by quite a bit there. Um, I guess what I needed was like a little bit less bottom. Had a little bit too much, but I still got a very, I still got a really makeable shot on the eight. Um, I don't think I'll cut it into that corner on the right. I'll probably cut it into this corner on the left. Maybe a uh, draw with knowing my play style. Oh, well, yeah, I think I'll. Looking at it the way I would want to play it right now is I'll shoot the eight ball into this corner on the bottom left and uh, well, am I going to draw it? Maybe I'm worried about the scratch if I play it with top and try to come to your rail. So I'm probably going to draw it with some bottom left and just try to get decent shape on the nine. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what was that miss? Oh wow. That was terrible. Okay, next rack. All right, we're back in the next rack after that terrible miss. And uh, we'll see what happens. I almost scratch into the side pocket. I do that so much, but uh, I end up making two balls. Luckily I didn't scratch, so they'll still count towards my points. And there it is, I'm pointing out the five ball. You can see that the, uh, the five ball is in a terrible spot. It's gonna be a hard rack to get out on. Uh, gotta figure out a way to get shape or break out that five ball <clears throat> with the very little bit of shape that you can get. Um, now, like, if I was playing a regular game, I'd probably. Oh, don't shoot the three ball. What do you do? Okay, 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 okay. I thought I was gonna shoot the three. I just line it up to see where I wanted to get it. Anyways, if I was shooting a regular game, I'll probably just play position to play safe on this, but there are no safes when you're playing against the ghost. And, oh, wow, the video cut out. Oh, I remember, okay. So my camera actually ran out of memory at one point, and that was it, and let me look at my phone. Yeah, so that rack, eh, let me just make sure. But, yeah, that rack, I ended up getting six points. Yep, I ended up getting six points. Um, but yeah, anyways, I guess we will uh, we'll move on and move on into this rack. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I have a bigger I have a bigger memory card now that I'm gonna use from now on. And also, I bought a a chart like a it's a way to plug in my camera while I'm recording, so I don't have to depend on battery life. So I'll never run out of battery again, which like like I did whenever I recorded the Chris Smelling video. I, I shot it like 80 times, and finally the time that I make it, I look at the camera, it's off. The battery died. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> oh, that was so annoying. Anyways, so I fixed both of those problems. Hopefully I won't run into those anymore in future videos. Uh, but here we are in the next rack. Let's. Let's see if we can identify what the problems are here. Um, right off the bat, you can see getting on the two is not super easy. Um, I gotta try to play it into that, so it's gonna all, it's all gonna be about speed control here. Right, so I'm just gonna play the one down into this corner, follow it with straight top English, and try to get, you know. Oh no, I'm not gonna. Maybe the eight ball was blocking it. Maybe I have to. Uh, get between the two and nine. Oh yeah, I do it pretty nice. Um, unfortunately I got a bridge over the nine, but I think that's, I think I was playing it to actually bump the nine, kind of move it out of the way. Uh, but obviously I didn't get that, and I got a bridge over the nine ball, which on a nine foot table, this is no easy task. I'm gonna have to use the, I'm gonna have to use the bridge. So, we got the bridge. 
We're gonna have to use it on the top end. This is gonna be a tough shot. And then it really limits your options of where you wanna bring the cue ball because you can only really put top on this ball. And so I guess I'm probably gonna be shooting this three into the side if I do make this. Or I'll come off two rails and shoot it into the uh, corner pocket. Oh, I tried to draw it and I missed. So yeah, that was a big mistake. Um, looking back, I should have just uh, I should have just rolled it up and played it in this corner in the bottom left. But I'm not sure if that was available. Maybe it was blocked by the eight, and I had to play it like that. I don't know. It's hard to tell. But yeah, definitely a mistake. Um, if I would have just played it better, ran into the nine like I intended, then I wouldn't have run into any of those problems. Anyways, we'll get into the next rack and see what happens there. Alright, here we are. Rack 10, final rack. Um, I had a I had a strong start, you know, first first, you know, three or four racks I did pretty decent. And then I just kinda died off. I wasn't shooting very good. It's pretty uh pretty disappointing. I could have scored a lot better um, than what I did. Or than what I do. What I am scoring. However, whatever tense this is, I don't know. It's me talking about myself, something that I did in the past tense, talking to you guys. You guys are watching me right now. Anyways, um, here, leave a nice angle uh, on the two, I think. Hmm, how do you want to play this? So, you have a couple options. You can play this with right and go off the, uh, go two rails down and try to play this three ball in the side pocket, or you can play it with left which what it looks like I'm doing am I no that's what I try to do I go two pot two rails and uh, three ball in the side pocket I like that shot uh, pretty well controlled speed wise I slightly overrun it which is a little unfortunate but it looks like I can pocket the three float down for the uh, four ball and oh that's no good yeah okay <laughs> I don't look very happy. Uh, <laughs> Alright guys, I think that's going to be the end of the video. Um, dang man, so so let's put it all together. What, I ended up getting 58 points. That's, that's pretty decent. Um, you know, looking back, I see some of the mistakes I made. And even though I scored a 58, which is you know, an A division player according to this, the website, I, I don't feel like I shot it at an A division level. So, you know, is this rating, is this rating really accurate? Um, uh, it's debatable. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I ended up scoring 58. You know, I probably, if I would have just played slightly smarter, I would have, uh, I would have done a little bit better. And, uh, but anyways, this, this is a good way to track your progress. I actually did this the week before as well, and I scored the same exact score, 58 points. Kind of interesting. Um, I actually recorded that one too, and that was the one I was originally going to use for this, and I was really excited because I had an awesome jump shot that I made, and then I guess I turned off my camera too soon, and all the files got corrupted, unfortunately. So... Um, I wasn't able to use any of those files, so I went back out and I did it again. And I scored the same amount. I didn't play as good, I think, but I thought that I did play well until I went back and watched this with you guys and uh, did this commentary over it. So I guess I didn't do that great. But uh, anyways, this is a pretty awesome system. Um, I really like doing this. It gives me a good idea of how I'm shooting. Um, I've scored anything from the low 30s, like a 32 on a terrible day where it's just like my break isn't working, I'm getting tons of clusters, um, maybe I'm missing position, and I've had other days where I shot like, I felt like a god. I shot a 77 one time, that was the best I've ever done on this, and uh, I felt pretty good shooting a 77, I mean, it, that's pretty tough, like for me. You know, I'm sure someone like Shane Van Boning, they probably, they'll probably get into the 90s every time. But for me, shooting a 77, I was pretty happy with it. Um, 
I'm really curious about what your guys' uh, what your guys' handicaps are. So if you want to make a video and uh, you know link it down below, I'll watch it. I'm really curious how you guys shoot. Um, uh, anyways, yeah. Um, if you don't want to make a video, just shoot the shoot the ten racks, ten ball. Leave a comment down below telling me you know my score was my score was you know. 70 points you're trash <laughs> yeah whatever whatever you do you i don't care do whatever you want to do man uh or girl although i looked at my youtube stats and my audience is 100 percent male so uh anyways yeah you guys take it easy and i'll see you next week